Hi everyone, this is Matt Bowman with Vader News and I'm here with John Much, the President and CEO of Cymark. John, thanks for joining us. Um, you have a big announcement today. Can you tell us what that is? Sure. Uh, today, Cymark is announcing the uh, acquisition of Beyond Trust Corporation. Uh, Cymark is a leading provider of privilege access and control software in the Unix and Linux uh, infrastructure market. The acquisition of Beyond Trust today gives us a very similar product on the Windows desktop market. So privileged access and access control for Windows desktops. Uh, the acquisition is going to broaden the strategic value and significance of our company dramatically uh, to our customer base, which is the global IT 2000. So companies have many people who need to access their database, but you want different levels of access because some people should see some things, but not everything. And so you provide the security background for that. Is that right? Yeah, the important question is who has access to what resources under what conditions? What can they do when they access those resources? The ability of our products extends into monitoring, keystroke logging, mm -hmm. and event management. So we can actually report and analyze who did what and create an audit trail for compliance purposes. Great. Now, Simark is the biggest provider of access management for Unix and Linux. Teaming up now with Beyond Trust gives you that market in Windows. So you have now kind of a global view of access management, um, I mean, a, a global product, basically, for access management. Um, you also must have a very interesting view of the security market in general. We know that Uncle Sam is very interested in funding more security technologies like yourself. Can you give us a sense of where this particular sector is right now and where it's headed? Yes, yeah, sure. The, uh, the combination of our companies now positions us as the leading provider of privileged access lifecycle management, the ability to manage heterogeneously across both the Windows and Unix market. Uh, the security industry and market is growing very rapidly. The insider threat, the ability of somebody on the inside of the company to create catastrophic damage is a key driver. The ability to control that access, to determine what they have access to and when they do access what they're doing is critical. There are also various compliance initiatives that we tap into. HIPAA regulations, Sarbanes-Oxley regulations, the credit card industry regulations. So SPAN we're finding the IT infrastructure, federal government sectors on uh, security products is very robust. Speaking of compliance and auditing, you have a very interesting history um, personally as a businessman. You took over a uh, difficult situation at Peregrine and ended up selling it for $425 million in 2005 to HP. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that history, what it was like to step into a situation at Peregrine? Sure. Peregrine Systems was a leading service and asset management provider in the early 2000s. Uh, they perpetrated one of the largest frauds in U.S. technology history, overstating revenue by $800 million and profit by $2 billion. Uh, I was appointed to the board of directors by the U.S. Bankruptcy Court. I helped the company emerge from bankruptcy. And when we emerged from bankruptcy in uh, July of 2003, we took over as chief executive officer. Um, my immediate task was really to restate five years of financial results for the company, going back and reconstituting the financials, bringing the company current with SEC filings, and then engendering confidence in both our employees and our customers in terms of the viability of the ongoing uh, Ultimately, we were very successful in doing that. We had a lot of interesting experiences along the way, uh, sort of, you know, out of the uh, norm types of things. I remember my first sales meeting in August of 2003 in front of our sales team. We were talking about our growth strategy, how we would restore the health of the company, and the FBI burst into the room and arrested three salespeople. Uh, so that was a, a very unique situation. They were international employees. They refused to respond to U.S. subpoenas and had been monitored through the Customs uh, uh, Administration uh, when they entered the uh, company and were, uh, were detained by, uh, by the FBI and questioned. So when you, when you run into experiences like that, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, unique and creates uh, different types of challenges. Perspective. John, last question. A lot of our audience are entrepreneurs, and in the course of a company history, you'll always run into situations where 
you have a PR mess. Um, what kind of advice would you give to a CEO who needs to clean up some kind of, uh, let's say, ethical and or PR problem? Yeah, I mean, clearly, from my perspective, the keys are to be fast, uh, be honest, and, uh, and be, uh, be vocal. Get out there, articulate the issue, diffuse the issue, address it head on, engender in people the sense that you have a reality-based view of the dilemma, the depth of the issue, and are going to take either very proactive to address it. Uh, that uh, you're on top of it. Well, John, thank you very much for talking with us. Best of luck to uh, you and the whole Beyond Trust team, and keep up the good fight. Thanks very much for having us today.